What's going on y'all? Chuck Nudface here. Got a really interesting one for you today on the table. This is the Scorpion 6 Knives Combat Folder. This is a custom knife. This is number 13 of only, I believe, 17 made. It was a knife that I really, really lusted after for quite some time, but could never really swing it, could never really make it work whenever they would be available as rarely as, or as rare as they would become available from direct from Scorpion 6 Knives. Um, I can never really make it happen, but uh, this one actually came up on the secondary through Recon 1, and I was able to move things, some things around really quick and get it at a below table price on it, and so I was pretty, pretty pleased about that. So, um... In case you hadn't noticed already just by looking at it, it's kind of big and it's kind of heavy and it's kind of thick and it's pretty darn unique looking. So let's go ahead and do some dimensions real quick. We're going to be looking at an overall package of almost 10, basically 10 inches from tip to stern, from tip to butt, bow to stern, tip to butt, whatever you want to call it. Um... And we're going to be looking at about a four and a quarter inch blade with about three and three quarters inch of cutting edge right there. And a very uh, noticeable blade finish. Let's put it that way with that. I believe they call it acid rain. Maybe you call it toxic. Maybe you call it unicorn farts. I don't know what you want to call it. Definitely not my favorite. And if I were to order this custom, I wouldn't have gone for that finish. But it kind of is what it is. Uh, you take what you can get when one of these becomes available and it's something that you've wanted for a long time. So I just have to kind of live with it right there. Um, I did reach out to Shane. Uh, Shane and Katie are the husband and wife du duo of Scorpion 6 Knives. They have a shop out in Arizona. They do everything uh, aside from water jetting blanks. Uh, I believe it's going to be frame and, and blade blanks. They do everything else by hand. They don't use machinery. CN well, they use machinery, of course, but they don't use you know, CAD designs or CNC or anything like that. So everything is pretty much just done by hand by two, those two right there. So we'll go ahead and do some size comparisons. There it is up against the Ontario rat number one. So it makes the rat number one look like a toothpick and it's going to make a knife like the, uh, spider code knives, um, native five look positively tiny as well. Um, Go ahead and put it up against another fairly substantial knife right there in the Buck 110, the original configuration in brass and wood and 420 HC. Um, and it's going to make the Buck 110 look pretty small also. Sabenza 21, forget about it. That's also going to be a small, large Sabenza 21 is also going to seem pretty small in comparison to the combat folder. And last but not least, go ahead and take quick comparison with the Spyderco uh, military model. This one is in 52-100. Uh, Sprint Run and Carbon Fiber. It's also a Collector's Club Edition, number 149. So that's pretty cool. Had this one for a long time. Definitely makes that one look pretty small as well. So the blade is a uh, Nitro V blade hardened to, I believe, 60 to 62. That's what Shane had told me. That's the number he was shooting for. He didn't know exactly how hard it was. I did sharpen this myself uh, on my KME. After getting it, the edge was not great. It didn't look like it had been used a whole lot, um, but the edge was still not quite where I wanted it. And I would believe that it would be over 60 uh, HRC just from my limited just in purely anecdotal experience um it just it did sharpen like a harder uh a harder not a softer uh rockwell hardness on the blade um it's thick too i mean this sucker weighs 10 ounces okay so yeah give or take uh a, a tenth of an ounce in either direction based on configuration some of them had some laser stuff you know cutouts on the on the the the, the booper or the um the butt, the skull basher, whatever you want to call it there. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's a thick boy. No doubt about it. I mean, there it is up against, you know, the rat one in thickness. I mean, it's, it's really, it's no contest up against the, the Chris Reeve knives in thickness. I mean, forget about it. You know, it's over half an inch thick easily. Um, you know, and that's just, between the between the, the the scales when you factor in factor in either the clip 
or these stabilizing braces, which is that's what these are. Um, this is these are stabilizing braces. They can be removed, and the knife can function perfectly well without it. Um, now, Scorpion Six does have a pretty, uh, I would say, a pretty much a, a, a almost zero or listen. I'll just say with what I, I'm not going to speculate in either direction. They've got a pretty pretty clear zero tolerance policy as far as taking off apart your knife. Um, you know, how do I feel about that? Listen, I know what I'm doing when it comes to knives. You know, I can take apart a knife. I know a lot of people that can take apart a knife and not screw anything up, but some people are just gonna, you know, do things to the knife and not be able to get it right. So basically you do void your warranty if you take the knife apart. Now, listen, you're, however you feel about that, I do have mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, I say, listen, if I just want to take apart my knife, I should be able to do so. But on the other hand, I say, you know, if you're going to mod your knife and change it from its original configuration, then I have no problem with a, with a maker or a manufacturer saying, you know what, the, 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 the warranty is void at that point. Um, you know, I think it's a little extreme, just, just, uh, you know, if you take it apart, it's, it's no longer under warranty. However, you know, you really do cover yourself if you do something like that. And I mean, if somebody did take apart a knife and it clearly hadn't been messed with, it just had been taken apart before. Listen, I can't speak for Shane and Katie, but I, Listen, I, I would hope that some there would be some wiggle room in there if you just ended up taking your knife apart and everything was still functionally fine. Um, you just put the lube you prefer on it or something like that. But anyway, I don't want to get too much into a rabbit hole or in the weeds on that. Um, the scales are obviously titanium. Like I said, these braces right here, they do act as you know torsion braces. So if you're going to be really jamming the knife into something and, and cranking it from side to side, they are going to provide a little lateral strength. Um, you know, so the you won't just have to rely on the pivot and the pivot strength alone. And they also double as, um, an over travel stop. The knife will function perfectly without them. You do not need to have them on there. Um, I kind of like them on there. I think it just adds more character to the knife. I mean, why try to make a knife like this more subtle? I mean, it's already pretty much as over the top as you can get almost. Um, so I really don't mind them on there. Um, but if you did want to take them off, uh, you just have a couple of holes in your scales on each side. I mean, if you were going to, like like I said, I, I needed to adjust the pivot on this because I was having some some blade play in it, and I just the pivot just kept on backing out, backing out. So I finally reached out to Shane about that as well, uh, Shane Magnuson of Scorpion 6, and he said, I usually use brand name Loctite. I recommend doing that. I was using a, a different, I think I was using Pemex, something like that. And he's like, I have no experience with that product. Um, but I did end up buying a tube of just Loctite 242, let it cure, clean it up, clean out the pivot, clean out the screws, the threads, everything else, let it cure. And ever since then, um, it's been just fine. The action on this is really good. Um, this one is riding on bearings. There were some models that came out on washers. This one is a bearing model, of course. Shane can tune a detent. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it really flies open with authority and it is not going anywhere with a shake. So it's in there secure and... Um, you know, it, it just flies out. It's very easy to just flick open, to slow roll with the thumb, to flick out with the thumb, or to flick out with the middle finger. Really, really easy to do. So definitely not a problem there. Um, this is not the first Scorpion 6 knife that I've ever had. This is actually the fourth. First one I owned was the, the Mechtig version one. Uh, then I owned the Bensag. Uh, which is just a smaller, more EDC version, EDC friendly version of, uh, you know, Warncliffe blade. And then um, I had an Arvin, which was a custom order, which is also really big, but a little more svelte than this one is. Um, and then, of course, the combat folder. I really always wanted one of these. And I could just like I say, I can never I could never make it happen um, whenever they would briefly become available. So I was very excited to pick this up. Um, it's not perfect. Of course, um, it's going to have some things that I don't like. In fact, all of, of Scorpion six knives that I've owned, they've always had something that I didn't really like about them. Um, the Meg TIG, the action wasn't really what I was, I was looking for. Now I could have sent that in and gotten it tuned, you know, improved that a little bit, but I didn't. Um, the Ben sag, uh, the, pocket clip I really didn't like on that one and the thumb stud the doorknob style thumb stud which is just something that they choose to use I didn't really like that as well um and then with the Arvin 
I don't know. I think I really liked the Arvin. The pocket clip wasn't my favorite on it, but it just generally was it was just time to move it on so I didn't end up keeping the Arvin uh the pocket clip on this one is not amazing either I mean when you when you've got it in pocket I mean basically it's going to sit to right here unless you want to put it at an angle and have it like that and just have it take up all of your pocket it's kind of up to you how you want to how you want to manage that um but you know it's it's not great that part right there is a definite hot spot when you have it in hand you can certainly notice that um, and you know, <laughs> looking at the knife, it's kind of riddled with hot spots. I mean, there's a lot of really aggressive jimping on this. Um, and if you've got this in your pocket and you have anything else in your pocket, you're, when you put your hand down there, you're going to get cheese grated on that, on that backspacer right there. Um, but it just kind of is what it is. Um, you don't buy this because it's going to be the most EDC friendly blade in the, in your collection. It's definitely not going to be that you get this just because it's big. It's bold, it's ostentatious, it's outrageous, and it just speaks to you on a visceral level, which is exactly why I got this. Um, who's it for? I mean, ultimately, it's for collectors. I mean, let's let's just be honest. It's really just for people who are knife enthusiasts and like this brand and like big overbuilt knives. Um, it could certainly be used in the field with ease. It's going to be able to take pretty much anything you can handle. Um, now, granted. A lot of the things that you could do with this knife, I would probably just grab a fixed blade for. Um, but, I mean, it's good to know that this knife can definitely handle it. Um, listen, this knife, I appreciate you checking it out. This is a knife that if you've been following me on Instagram, at Chuck underscore Nunface, you've seen me post several times. I'm pretty happy to own it. Uh, if you haven't done so already, if you don't mind clicking that little subscription button right there, that would definitely help out the channel. Closing in on 1,000 subscriptions, I really appreciate that, y'all. That means the world to me. Um, to see the channel grow over, you know, it's been a, a slow organic growth over the past 15 months or so. So I really appreciate, um, you know, every subscription and every comment and every like and every share that I get. So yeah, let's see if we can get over a thousand, uh, a thousand subscriptions before I do the next video. Uh, in any case, I do appreciate it. Thanks for checking me out. Go ahead and tell a friend that this video is out there, share it with somebody, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.